We don't need that much food. Like, who said anything about we? What if Shaggy and Scooby are right about Feigenbaum? We can't let freaky alien skull disease spread all over Earth. What are you doing, Daphne? Hi! I was just checking the engines. Houston has enough to worry about without us dumping our problems on them. <laughs> You're rewiring the ignition controls. We won't be able to take off. Oops! <laughs> Same old Daphne. Can't pass ignition controls without rewiring them. Oh, forget it. Ah! Oh no! Daphne's infected! I don't... Ah! Garrett! <laughs> <laughs> She must have cut the lights! <laughs> like that can't be good. He's opening the docking bay door! Oh. Oh. Everyone, hold on! Daphne, I thought everything was cooler in space, but it isn't. I'm sorry, gang. It's all my fault in space. Hey! <laughs> How dare you pretend to be our friend? You're not fit to wear her fake beard! That's an insult! Give it up! We already saw you change into one of those things. Oh, I get it. You guys are totally Feigenbombing me! Only because you Feigenbombed! Me? Fred's the Feigenbomber! He locked me in a supply closet! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not. I was with Shaggy and Scooby the whole time. Well, actually, like, um, not the whole time. Sounds suspiciously Feigenbummian. Guys, it could... Oh, like, make us land! Why not blame me? <laughs> oh. oh, I can't get us down! Uh, Fred? I can't control it. If we go too high, we won't be able to breathe. Hang on. Like, when were you gonna tell us you had to dump everyone out of the fan lever? Great, you got control back. I didn't do that. Then who did? Because it wasn't me. It's the evil force. <laughs> it can't be. Still too dull to be my dream, Velma? Think about it. The evil force seeks out the most powerful protective shell it can find. What's better than the mystery machine? No! We're talking about the mystery machine. My mystery machine. My baby. I can reason with it. It'll listen to me. But we don't even listen to you. Hey! I command you to stop! 
stop? Stop! Stop! Set heel! Roll over! Hey, hey, calm. Hello, girl. It's me, Freddy. The one who raised you, nurtured you, lovingly made you into the special girl you are today. So special, yeah. That's right. It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. You don't want to hurt anybody. I was wrong! She does want to hurt! She does want to hurt! <laughs> gonna get to the museum now uh, looks like the coast is clear it's a good gig I don't bother anyone no one bothers me but but what about the monster the monster doesn't bother me I don't bother it besides the longer the monster scares away new buyers the longer I keep this sweet job now if you'll excuse me I'm not bothering you so you're not allowed to bother me I don't make the rules Strange. I wonder why the plant monster's only attacking certain people. It seems like so far he's left the Goths and Jeff alone. I believe your answer lies in empathy. You're not looking at this from the plant's point of view. What does it want? What's its motivation? A plant's motivation? Dirt, water, light. That's a plant's motivation. That's it. Plants are attracted to light. The Goths wear dark clothing, hang out in dark rooms. They're basically invisible to a plant. Look at us bright clothes, running around with flashlights. Fred, you're wearing an orange ascot. That's like a bullfighter's red cape to a plant monster. We need to camouflage ourselves. Well, I don't care how non-empathetic it makes me. I am not dressing like a plant. Uh, I don't think that's what she has in mind. We look like a my motorcycle gang. Empathy. Drink it in, everyone. Wow, Shaggy, you have changed. You look great. Did I mention that we saw the monster? Spent some time with it. That's awesome. You're really starting to fit into our scene here. Yeah, well, I usually prefer more food-themed atmosphere, but the company here sure is nice. Amelia, I warned you that inviting outsiders here was a bad idea. You've been summoned by Lord Morlack. Oh, oh, I never get summoned. He didn't. The Dark Lord shows very little mercy. Let me handle this. You're kidding. Dearest Amelia, is it true you have invited outsiders into our midst? Uh, they're my friends. Well, don't be rude, darkling child. Make introductions, first taste. Well, this is Shaggy. I think he's the one I've been looking for to complete that darkest union ritual. I'm unconvinced. Before spending time with us, Shaggy was a cowardly soul whose only purpose was the hunt for sustenance. A life without hope or meaning? I love it! And what of the rest? Well, that one's a talking dog, and the other three solve mysteries about monsters on a weekly basis. I'm delighted. You know we have our own dark spirit that haunts these grounds. We've seen it. It's a plant monster. No, Jeff, the security guard with the slurping. Ugh. Well, you also have an actual plant monster. It's pretty much a really creepy fern or something. That is truly tragic. In terms of your request with this shaggy fellow, I'll consider it. But for now, I must take leave of you all and commune with the dark spirits of Gothmore. Guys? It happened right in here. Hmm. Let's take a look around. Dude! Hey, what's this? No, 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 no,
I just had a very interesting conversation with the groundskeeper about the origins of this ape man. It turns out the land this retirement home was built on used to be a zoo that was shut down when a bunch of primates escaped and caused havoc throughout the city. They were all eventually captured except one, an alpha male ape they called Crusher because of his enormous strength and size. <laughs> It's possible that he has survived, hiding on the land all these years. He could be running out of natural resources, which would explain why he's showing up at the retirement village, and also mean he's very dangerous. Yeah, you mull that over. I gotta go find a pair of glasses. I feel too vulnerable like this. Huh? <laughs> ah! Ah! What was that? Did a camel spit at me? Oh, Velma, I'm so sorry. I thought you were the ape man. Really? I look that different without my glasses? Like there's gotta be an extra pair of glasses around here somewhere. Did someone say cat? Um, no? We were looking for some spare glasses for my friend here. Quick, come in! <gasps> <gasps> No sudden movements. Good thing Scoop isn't here. Lights are out. You know what that means? Light them up. I'm cutting shorts. What happened, Scoop? Thankfully, nothing. Come on, this way. Yeah, could I lead? Hey, come on. Shaggy's Grammy isn't here, so I can actually lead for a while. I am the leader after all. May I please enjoy being in my natural state? Thank you. Your natural state is gross. <laughs> That's better. Beast? I can see the fear in your eyes. Well, your eye. Oh, no. See? He's more scared of us. It wasn't us he was afraid of. Okay! Like Scoob and I managed to lift one clean latent print. We got him now. How much more ID do you need beyond ten stories tall? Velma, what are you doing? What? She asked, what are you doing? Huh. <sighs> Daphne, you have chosen the worst time to become a hibernophile. She's afraid of sleeping bears? No, it means she's gone crazy for all things Irish. Well, I am also afraid of sleeping bears, but that's a total coincidence. The tracks end here. Oil? These footprints go pretty deep. I wonder if there's natural oil reserves beneath this entire area. That would make the Land Valley Hill castles on even more valuable. I think we need to look a little deeper into the local history here. Are you sure you kids are okay? We're fine, young Angus. I just can't believe we actually encountered a giant. I told you, but you didn't pay attention. No one ever pays attention. I. What are you doing, Lassie? Scoob, translate. What are you doing? Research. Anything to shed light on this giant business. Research? I've done the research and the results are in. Pack your bags and get out of this cursed place before we're all stopped. Sorry, Mr. McQuaid. We're in the middle of a mystery of your mad. You're all completely mad. Hey, that's my branch of the family tree you're examining for clues. Scoob. The lady doth protest. Hey, like what's this? It appears to be an ancient map. A 
According to this map, in ages past, when McFinn ruled Valley Hale, it was filled with supernatural creatures. Fairies, vampires, banshees, and more. No human dared set foot in it. There's clearly more to this castle than meets the eye. Huh, wonder why that is. Shagrates, is it true that Arachne the Spider Woman has been terrorizing Athens? I know if given a chance. I can prove not all of these mythological monsters are real. Oh, Fred, I must take you to the Oracle. You need answers to the questions you seek. And lest you forget, a stuffed pita tastes delicious whether you know the ingredients or not. Hmm. Well, I guess there's truth in your metaphor. <laughs> no matter what now? Impudent? I'm sorry, but I was being totally pudent in there. It wasn't your place to speak, Daphne. But I appreciate you sticking up for me. Look, I don't want to marry Shlomelius, but I can't let my whole kingdom down. But what about the giant spider monster everyone's talking about? Could be an evil omen. I know! We should consult the Oracle for advice! Oh, I don't believe in that supernatural mumbo-jumbo. We live in an age of science and reason. Everything can be explained without resorting to meddling gods and monsters. Okay, let's hear the explanation for that! Ah! Yeah! Giant spider monster! Hey, that does explain it! Oracle? Oracle? Do you really think the Oracle can help me solve some of these mythical mysteries? Yep! Like the all-seeing Oracle is cool like that! We go way back! Ah! Princess Valmonia! Like, what are you doing here? We were just attacked by Arachne in the courtyard! Sounds like a myth mystery! A mystery! Hey, aren't you Fredericos? The guy Homer wrote the Idiot and the Oddity about? That's the Iliad and the Odyssey? Anyway, we're here to see the Oracle. Us too! Ah, <sighs> one cannot find wisdom unless one is on the path that leads to wisdom. Ah! Wait, okay. what is that? Follow me! Makes sense. Right, quite Why profound. I think of that? So, Shagrates, I've never met the Oracle. What's he like? Ah! Like that! What is it you seek? Uh, hi, Mr. Oracle, sir? Uh, uh Princess Felmonia here? You know, from... The Oracle knows all! What number am I thinking of? <clears throat> Should I marry Prince Shlomelius? Will there be food? You mean at the wedding? Hmm. I know a caterer. I guess if I marry him, there will be food, and my city will be protected, but... Form of a question! Should I call off this wedding to stop the Arachne attacks, even though it will leave my city defenseless? That waste of food? What if there's falafel? I prefer mine with hummus. Aha! The great all-seeing oracle is really... <gasps> a dog! Oh, hey, Scooby Miss! Hi, Sympathy! Wow! Like, that's a lot of wedding guests to deliver a, a, a speech to. Look at them all, judging me. There you guys are! Nate, how's it going? Terrible! Listen, you can't tell Kimmy, but last night I was attacked by a ghost! A, a ghost? speech? I mean, a ghost? Yeah, this place is really haunted. Not good. Kimmy is a very superstitious bride. I'm telling you, she will only see the negative side of an evil ghost attacking her wedding. Why would she choose a potentially haunted wedding venue? She didn't know. Kimmy loved this bed and breakfast so much, I couldn't bring myself to tell her. I assumed it was just an urban legend. What was? A hundred years ago, a photographer was trying to take a picture of a very large wedding party on the cliff's edge, but he couldn't get everyone in frame. So he asked them all to take a few steps back. That's the final photograph. They say the ghost of the Cliff Bride haunts this place as an omen of bad luck. Okay, this is unsettling. What were the chances a story like that could be true? In our experience, a hundred percent. Don't worry, Nate. We'll solve this mystery and save your wedding. But the wedding is only in a few hours. There's so much going on, so much to do. And Kimmy can't find out about any of this. Or she'll call the whole wedding off. Call the wedding off? I don't think so. You and Kimmy are our oldest friends. Right now, we are going to split up and solve this mystery. And you know, nothing, and I mean nothing, can distract us from solving a mystery. Hey, it's a 
catering tent? What? I was distracted. Like maybe we should investigate these wedding appetizers. You're not devouring. No, I can't focus on food. I gotta write my speech. How's this sound? <clears throat> like... Go on. Well, that's all I got so far. What do you think? <laughs> oh, you're right. It's hopeless. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> Okay, this is where Nate said he was attacked by the ghost. Look for anything that seems out of place. These heels are out of place on this rocky terrain. Whoa! <sighs> so much for being graceful. You should try my method. Less glide, more stomp. Guys! <laughs> like how about more? Run for your lives! <laughs> Acceptable. As promised. That was... Oh, uh, that was our official town anthem. Oh, Littlefield, we love thee and hope our founder doesn't return from the grave. By Littlefield's tuba laureate and only musician, Violet Oberon. Thank you. Mr. McGrath, <gasps> why have you called this press conference? Is it to announce that you are withdrawing from the mayor's race? <clears throat> well, I'll feel this one, Joe. Had Joe McGrath been allowed to answer this question, he would have said he's endorsing a new candidate. A candidate willing to challenge Mayor Putnam on the issues. One who won't be intimidated by supernatural threats. Ladies and gentlemen, your next mayor, the fearless, unstoppable Velma Dinkley! Oh. <clears throat> Stupid paper. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Velma Dinkley, and I am here to announce that I am running for mayor of Littlefield. <coughs> I know you have been living in fear, but let me assure you, no supernatural spirit is going to scare me away. I may not have much experience with politics, but I do have plenty of experience with... The ghost! <laughs> yes, exactly. I do have a lot of experience with... Huh? The ghost of Avis Littlefield! <laughs> I'll handle this, Velma. Run! I think that went well. Yep. Congratulations, Velma. You're a viable candidate. The ghost of Amos Littlefield hates you. But you got the coward boat in the back. In the yellow state. Split up! Why like, shouldn't the ghost be chasing after the candidate? I demand a recount. <laughs> like, there you are. You're late for your watch. <laughs> Our spies let us know the red coat attack is supposed to happen this very night. You better get to your lookout post before Lieutenant Colonel. <laughs> uh oh, too late. As you were. Now remember, Corporal, if you see the enemy, don't forget our warning system. One if by land. Two if by sea. Three if by land and sea. Four if by hoverboard. Okay, soldier, this here's your post. Make sure you keep a lookout until you see the whites of their eyes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Would this be something you'd find, say, in a kite store? Uh-oh. -uh. So it's not a kite. Uh-oh. -uh. Is it kite-related? Uh-oh. -uh. Did it say the price of Britain is responsibility? Uh-oh. -uh. Uh -uh. So you didn't see Winston Churchill? No. no. Man, this is hard. <laughs> what? It's the Phantom! Uh, I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> hey, what are you- Thelma, no time! Punch it! <laughs> It came from that way! You mean up those stairs? Velma, we have to go! Now! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Anyway! <gasps> uh... 
Uh, Trudy? Ruby. Trudy went to take a bath and... And? I'm sorry. Without my sister, I can't finish a... Uh... Coffee table book about the Australian Outback? Guys, the Phantom must have grabbed Trudy. What am I gonna do? I can't function without my... Bath salts. Bath salts? <laughs> wow, Fred. That's worse than my coffee table book guess. No, no, no. Look. Bath salts. All over the floor leading down the hall. Perhaps to a coffee table book about Australia. <gasps> it's all coming together. Ruby, stay in your room and lock the door. We're gonna follow this clue and it could get dangerous. Fortunately, if there's any rescuing required, we've got Velma around to save our necks. Seriously, is no one going to even address the whole sudden everyone jump on Velma escape plan? I'm clearly the smallest, least athletic one here. I'm sorry, you did what now, <coughs> Velma? The trail leads under that door. <coughs> Whew, that's a lot of bath salts. Sodium maldehyde. It's extremely volatile at high temperatures. It also happens to be the most versatile of the maldehyde family, having numerous applications such as... Curing meat? <laughs> yep. This must be where the Colonel developed all his crazy recipes. We discovered the fountain of jerky! <laughs> We're cured. Kenneth? My slumber party. <gasps> Why do they call you oft injured, Willie? Ah, ow. Oh, oh, that makes oh, oh, no The tale Cutler tells is that of a pirate ghost who haunts these shores. His name is Halfbeard, treasure hunter of the high seas, and unable to grow hair on half his face, he buried his fortune in a nearby cove when he was ambushed by the notorious pirate hunter Ginger Fuzz. Halfbeard met a watery end that day, but his ghost lived on to watch over his treasure. <laughs> Scaring away all who dare near its hidden location, including customers of this very restaurant. His legend is known locally as the Curse of Halfbeard's Booty. Booty? <laughs> <laughs> he said booty! <laughs> Guys, booty is another word for treasure. And I've heard of Ginger Fuzz. She's part of an old Blake family legend. She? Amelia Ruth Blake. Mother told me stories about her as a child. She wore a giant red mustache, disguising herself as a man to get a ship and crew. Makes sense. Women were considered bad luck on ships at that time. Maybe Cutler's telling the truth. Listen to your friends, Frederick. With your mystery-solving skills and my knowledge of the area, we could solve this mystery together. Okay, Cutler. But you are not to leave my sight. I'd have it no other way. To the docks, then. Ah, like, we're just gonna stay behind and investigate the, uh, <laughs> restaurant. And its contents. Kyler <laughs> was honest with one thing. Mm -hmm. This is the best seafood on the eastern seaboard. Yeah, they certainly earned my trust. Oh, it's half beard's ghost. <laughs> hey, look, beware ye all who enter. Hold on, Scoob. Right there on the place map, it says, Beware ye all who enter. This door is on the map. And maybe the tunnel leads to the treasure. Tunnel beast pirate ghost. <laughs> I've seen Halfbeard's ghost here on several occasions. Hey, guys. Something's coming toward us. Don't be alarmed, it's just Karen. What is she doing in there? Uh, nothing. I'll tell you what she's doing. She's poaching my lobsters again. 
Well, I'm not. Go on, get away from my dock. Ah, uh, you never saw me here. Yes, I did. Now you all best get back to the arcade before anything else comes to life around here. Well, that was creepy. Yeah. Ah! Now what? Me those. Sorry. What were you guys doing in there? Hiding. We were attacked by Pete's old possum. Speaking of which, this must be where he attacked Lydia, that little girl from earlier. She'd have had to stand on these phone books to work the controls. Hey, like I know this game. Battle Boppers. I used to always play this one because if you beat it, you win 10,000 tickets. Well, that's enough to win any prize you want. I know. That's why I was always playing it. I was trying to win Pizza Pop. Pizza Pop. Stuffed animal. Aw, Pizza Pop. I couldn't win enough games to win them as a kid, and now I can't solve this mystery to win them as an adult. Or an adult-sized kid. I wouldn't be so sure of that, Shaggy. I have a feeling Pizza Opossum attacking this game is no coincidence. Agreed. It's clear now what he's after. We just need to lure him out with some... Bait! No. Uh-huh. Daphne? Yes? Don't do it. Thelma wants to play. My calluses. Thelma Dinkley, you can do this. Game on. Yeah, you can come back me. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Secret Service. You're a secret agent? Yes. I'm trying to save the world from a power-hungry evil genius called Bubby. Save the world? What does this Bubby want with toast? I'm convinced Bubby is planning to kill breakfast. Kill, kill breakfast? breakfast? I don't see how you can kill breakfast. You'd be surprised at the crazy over-elaborate schemes that would have succeeded had not someone intervened. Actually, I wouldn't be that surprised. Now what? What is that thing? He's called Minus. He's a freelance agent who works for the highest bidder. Whenever he shows up, someone is subtracted. <laughs> <laughs> I may have underestimated you. Everyone always does. This is what they're after. I'd be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone. We have to get that thumb drive back. What else can this thing do? A lot! Not bad. Look! Minus! We'll cut him off at the pass. <laughs> so, he 
wants to play chicken, eh? I we concede! Scooby and I register with the National Cowardice Guild! We're card-carrying members! There are only three options here, friend. You turn the wheel, he turns the wheel, or we crash into each other. I came prepared. <laughs> Did he? Fourth option. Up. Oh. oh, come on! Like, are we actually? Here we are, the city dump. Of course, because as Fred, you want to be around garbage because it, it hones your, your, no, I'm lost. We're trying to find a rare part for the mystery machine, a tri-cylinder vector manifoil. Aren't we trying to find a mystery? No, no, bad doggy, bad doggy. Nope, they find us. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call a collar. Axel? Scooby-Doo? Man, it's been forever! Like you do know each other? Yeah, we were kennel mates. <laughs> we're looking for new recruits for a special tactical canine police unit. <laughs> Impressive! I'll take the cool, non-knocked unconscious by a fly dog, please. I'll call you Axel after that shaft connecting my car wheels. You're gonna be the coolest crime-fighting dog of all time. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And that I am. Equipped with cutting-edge, high-tech gadgets, like this voice translator that makes everything I say sound authoritative and cool. Check it out. I dropped some asparagus on my slats. Cool. That was amazing. Oh, I wish I said that. I got 700 arrests to my name, no crime I can't solve, no perp I can't catch. So, uh, what have you been up to, Scoob? Uh, ate a hot dog? Like we solve mysteries all the time. Yeah, that too. Right, sure. So, listen, I'd love to catch up, but, uh, my partner and I are busy doing serious detective work. We're investigating a trash monster that's been terrorizing the area. Trash, trash monster? monster? Sounds, Sounds like, like a, a mystery, mystery to me. me. Hey, that's my line. I invented Sounds Like a Mystery to Me. Bad other Fred. Oops, sorry. Just trying to get into the Fred head, you know? Daphne, there's plenty of me to go around, but you must share the Fred, not hog the Fred. This way, gang. In spite of what those two blonde guys are saying, you best stay out of the way and let the trained professionals handle this case. Right? We're not even here. Scoob, don't let that mutt boss you around. We're just as good at solving mysteries as he is. We face monsters and ghosts on a daily basis. Axel's in our world now. Yeah, he's in our house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, it looks like we forgot to clean. I'm really sorry, sir. Come on, guys. Let me show you around the compass. Sir? Welcome to Brain Explosion Games. Over there is the smoothie bar. That's the hacky sack lounge. There's the employee massage garden. And to your left is the 24 hour gluten free commissary right next to the automated gluten dispenser for the weak willed. That's the other hacky sack lounge. This place seems kind of empty. Oh, yeah. An employee claimed he was attacked by a real ghost chef. So a lot of people are working from home. A ghost chef? From the video game? That sounds like a mystery. Eh, I think he was just saying things. 
He'd been pulling a lot of all-nighters writing code, which isn't as easy when you get older. You know how it is. How would I know how it is? <laughs> you realize I'm only 18 years old, <laughs> dude. Oh, right. Sorry. <coughs> Ugh. I've got to go to a meeting about a new game we're developing. Mr. Junior is waiting for you on the top floor. You guys just make yourselves at home and enjoy the compass. Okay, we certainly... <clears throat> Sweet! Yeah, whatever. That's, like, cool. You said top floor? Where's the elevator? Oh, brain explosion is eco-friendly. We have hot air balloons instead. Janky. I know how you feel about our code, Velma, but listen to what Mr. Junior has to say. I think you'll see he has a lot to offer. Yes! Boss level again. Oh. Uh. All right, Scoob, let's eat. This place is empty. <laughs> nice try, Scoob, but I am not looking up. <laughs> huh? Ghost Jeff is here. Like does, Scoob. Who do you think's shooting food at us? He is. Like your plan to distract me will and or has failed, Scooby-Doo. Incoming! Oh! Like the shaggy. Wait for the doors! Doors close fast! Special move! Oh. Uh, hi, officer. Uh, not wearing a name tag? guys, we got a call that some dangerous fugitives are in the area. Have you by any chance seen these individuals? Ah! Uh... Can't say I have, officer. Gang? No. no. I haven't seen the dog is adorable. Goodbye, me. Okay, Larry. Clear a path. Let these innocent law-abiding citizens through. Fred, look. It's Rose. Everyone, hang on. Stop that man! Hang on, guys. It's about to get interesting. What has it been up to this point? I never thought this day would come, but I'm totally open to splitting up now! <laughs> Can we go? That's it! Great idea, Shaggy! I've always wanted to test this out! Test what out! I'm immediately regretting this! What's happening, Fred? We're splitting up! <laughs> This is Unit 6. We'll stay on the back end. Zoinks! <laughs> like we have a tail! <laughs> you wish. <laughs> Where'd they go? They were just here. <laughs> we're being pulled over. Oh, wonderful. How fast were you going? I don't know. It was a high-speed pursuit. Just be cool. Just be cool. License and registration, please. Is there a problem, officer? What's going on? You match the description of these two men. That's us. That's a positive ID. So where did you last see yourselves? We're right here. And when was that? Just now. Good. So you couldn't have gotten far. Wait right here while we run this. Everything will be fine. They have nothing on us. Well, nothing on you. I've got priors. <laughs> huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wedding march, not a crawl. Let's pick up the pace. <sighs> okay.
Okay, let's do this. Ring. Check. Wait a minute. Objections. Nope. Hold on. This isn't how... Nate, say I do. Scooby, we haven't said our vows. We trust you. But I practiced them all night. This is important to us. Ugh. Make it snappy. Kimmy? I knew from the moment... <laughs> <laughs> I knew if you found out, you'd freak and think it was bad luck. Oh, and what a strange reaction that would be. You know what's bad luck? Starting your marriage on ghost lines! That's not a real superstition. It is now! Oh, so we're just making up superstitions now. Fine, how about it's bad luck to be so superstitious? I can't believe it. I really thought I could solve this mystery in time and save their wedding, but I failed. I'm the worst man. Oh, if only I could have stomped faster, better, truer. I no longer deserve the epithet stompy. Yeah, and like now, I can't give my best man speech, which I was so looking forward to. Nice try. What I do, and I'm not about to let my beloved Belmonia get sucked into a miserable life of servitude. Nice try, drat. Well, first things first, let's split up and look for clues. Uh, Prince Shamilius, Your Highness, are you okay? My arm itches. I know Velmonia doesn't like me because I'm itchy. No, don't be silly. Like, that's not why she doesn't like you. I don't know how to talk to the girl people. I tried to impress her with my faded poison ivy rash, but she looks at me like I have a non-faded poison ivy rash. Well, maybe there are non-poison ivy rash related topics you could talk about. That's my A material. Other than the speaking about toys. And, hey, careful! I spent hours with the placing and the standing. I've got you now. Not until the last man falls. Try with the cutting them off at the pass. Nobody out with the flanking. Yes, I win! In your face! In your face! Two against one. Hmm. Hurry up, Velmonia! It won't take long for them to realize we're missing! Daphne, I don't think running away is the right thing to do. It's the only thing to do! You can't marry a guy you don't love! While everyone's at the big pre-wedding feast, we'll sneak out in disguise. You, as loom salesman, Metamphisi Drapetus, and me, as your long-suffering wife, Taliporia Genaika. No, Daphne. I am a princess, a daughter of Athens. My father needs this union to protect the good people of this city and I will not abandon my duty to them. Wait, where are you going? I must go through with this wedding, and I must do it now. Like you're actually going through with a wedding to a man you don't even know or like? When's the feast? All seeing, all eating. But what about the mystery? I have to do my duty as a princess in our world. Nothing can change that. <laughs> Run!
to finally meet you, Velma-sama. I designed this line of kimono especially after you. It would be my pleasure if you would accept it as a gift. Thank you, Mr. Kagawa. It'll be perfect for tonight's festival. Huh, I don't think I did this right. Yeah, you didn't. So cool! Huh? Sonoi ne! I guess I dabneized it. Hmm. Seven hundred year old mystery. You're talking about the Kaneaku. How did you know? Everyone knows it. That is why so many people have moved out of this neighborhood. So the Kaneaku is only attacking this area. I wonder why. I don't know. We're not friends on social media. Huh. I guess wrong is the new right. It's so cool. Looks good. Huh. No. Uh-uh. Like <laughs> Scoop, I think we lost him. Being alive is proof. <laughs> <laughs> Here you guys are. Daphne, we saw the crab monster end. Daphne, we saw the crab monster end. Wait, you saw it? What did it look like? I stood on the highest windowsill of a skyscraper for two weeks. That's being indecisive. I was run over by a garbage truck. How's not looking both ways real magic? Guys, please. I think we can all agree that no magic is real magic. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? You pawned the quarter, card was marked, deck wasn't shuffled, your tooth was already loose, same-sided coin, you dislocated your shoulder, the first frog was fake, contact lenses, that's not the same pair of underwear. <sighs> <sighs> like, there you guys are. Where's this shirt? Hey, you're Johnny Cobra. Like, I once saw you hang upside down in a tank of non-fat milk for three days. I've always wanted to ask you this. Why? Freddy or not. Yes, that's me. You're on next. Oh, really? <laughs> How's my eyeliner? How would I know? Okay, gang. It's magic time! Welcome to member auditions. First to the stage is a young magician who may be new to magic, but magic is not new to him. What? I give you... Oh, wait. How did he do that? Freddy or not? 
Hi, I am Freddy or not, and I ask you to imagine the unimaginable. As you can see, I am completely tied up with ascots. Once I enter this ice cold water, I'll have but two minutes of air in my lungs. And now, Daphne will slowly lure me to my almost certain doom. <laughs> <laughs> Like, does Fred know what he's doing? Oh, this is an old trick. Something's wrong. There, the finishing touch. Yeah. Trust me, it's a perfect plan. How do you feel? Like making you soup? Yes, the disguise is so good it actually brings out your maternal instincts. Now we can join the gang up front. What about this pigsty? Listen to that view. Hey, I think this is working. Ugh, three days trapped here without a mystery. Oh, come on, Fred. You smell way too frustrated. I'm sorry, Daphne. I'm looking forward to the trip, but all I ask for is just one little tiny mystery. <coughs> the Grim Reaper's on board! The Grim Reaper? <coughs> Are you sure? I mean, did you actually see him reap? And how grim was he? Like, on a scale from one to ten. I'd say about a nine. Uh, eight and a half, at least. Yes! A mystery. Sweet, sweet enigma of life and death. Whoa, whoa. Now let's all just take a deep breath here. Our last breath? Unless we stop this train. We can't stop the train. We're transporting delicate, time-sensitive medical supplies. Hmm. Look, I'm sure this is all just a misunderstanding. Aha! Yet the word misunderstanding has five-sevenths of the word mystery in it. Huh. His math is correct. Folks, please just stay in your seats and don't worry. Yes, we've got this. You take your seat too, sir. Me? <laughs> don't be silly. The dark physical specter of mortality has returned, casting a shadow of doom over all on board. That's totally my jam. Sit. Can I help you? Hi. Uh, like my, um, mother. <laughs> and I were wondering if we could take some food back to our seats. What do you say? Please. I'm sorry. Food service is not available yet. <laughs> <laughs> like the coast is clear. Wash your hands. And your face. <laughs> What's up, Scoob? <laughs> ah! Towel Mummy! Yeah. <laughs> 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 